Hey guys, and welcome back to Mega Basing 101 Reboot. I am here with Mojo and Zuri, as always. Hello. Greetings. And we are in this monstrosity, in a good way, of <laughs> Mojo's uh, Belt Mega Base. So this is absolutely insane. Um, this is th this entire Mega Base is belt based in terms as far as production is concerned, and we're starting out at the loading here and uh mojo's just kind of kind of walk us through uh the major parts of it and some tricks that have been used and such and uh just to kind of demonstrate the differences between a belt mega base and a bot mega base and just to show you uh you know what what there is to it because i know some people don't like doing uh entirely bot based mega bases so if you want to do a belt based one uh, then this would definitely be uh, a good one to kind of get an idea of of what what goes into it so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, actually, just on that. So the the reason why this came about was actually after the fifteen sim map, where we did the bot based uh, map, or well, the bot based. You know, what was it? One k science a minute, and I was like, that was yeah, that's done. Kind of boring now. So I'm going to do um, a, a entirely belt based science map. Right. And I actually, uh, you might be able to map view up. Uh, so if you go map view up to just above the make everything where the labs are, um, the labs are connected entirely by red belts. And so the target was one red belt, one compressed red belt of every science pack per minute. So it's designed to do 1,600 science packs a minute. And to, and to achieve it entirely through belts in the main base. There are a few exceptions, uh, so like mining isn't belt based; it's entirely bot based, and so is the most of the oil base. It's standard bot build, so the plastic is that standard build you would normally use, as well as the rocket fuel, right? Uh, which appeared in one of the previous workshop videos. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, we did cover that. So, yeah, we're starting yeah. out at the unloading here for all of your ores to go into the smelting. Yeah, so this is a 363 unloader into the smelters. Now, I can't remember the exact number of ore per minute off the top of my head for 1600, but the problem with belt bases is you can't use exact numbers straight out of the calculator. You need to make them fit uh, the capacity of the belts. And so, as it worked out, these were actually originally... So as a bit of a background, this was before this a one rocket per minute base in version 14, and it was two four twos, and that's where, and then it ha I had to extend it for the science, and so that's where the actual output comes from, uh, which is four uh, blue belts of each ore, and then that is converted into four blue belts of iron plate. Right, per smelting column, to keep in mind once we go through smelting, smelting column. columns, yeah. Yeah, so what we're standing in the middle of is there's two belts either side of us, and that's for one column. So if we continue up, fortunately the trains have all stopped moving, so you're safe for now. And uh, just yeah, really and quick, I want to mention just because I know there's people who are going to be wondering, the base is completely off. That's how we're at 6060. There's absolutely no way oh, that this yeah. base runs at 6060, just because I know there's going to be people wondering, like, how the hell are you doing it? Um, the base is literally just not on at all. Uh, yeah, so you yeah. actually, if you look at the production graph, you can see that it only has just turned off. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it fun when you were joining? <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> typically this base you said runs at like 20, 25 UPS? Yeah, 20 UPS with everything on. Uh, 27 UPS now. I'm actually to improve um, performance on it. With, and that's with the nuclear entities disabled and the steam boiler entities disabled as well. Okay. Uh, now, so, you see, this is... I know people are already mashing the keyboard in the comments already when they see the beacons they don't overlap everyone always screams at it it sets everyone off every time so each one of these columns does four bells and and what i wanted to do was have each column align with an unloader and to do that there's a minimum width required as well as 
Um, you need the four stacked on top of each other. And in between each beacon, you can only fit uh, one, two, and then one, two on the other side. So at the very entrance, that you can only have three ore coming in and then one plate going out. And so the final ore input has to fit on the side somewhere. And so what I did was I squeezed each input up between, up on the outside of, it, of the individual build, and that meant that the beacons couldn't overlap. But that wasn't a big deal in the end because they can't overlap anyway because then the smelters themselves would be narrower than the unloader. And then I would need a lot of belt trickery to uh, overcome that, which happened in the previous version of this, and, oh, that would make you sad. It would make you cry. There was a lot of weave interweave belts. I can almost see a solution to this where you put three belts through each instead and cram it closer together instead of four. Yeah, you could you could do it with red mm. belts uh, weaving. You still need the the gaps for uh, for the to correct the width. Although it is potentially possible to narrow it down. No, I mean, main um, instead of putting yeah. uh, four belts per column, three belts per column. It won't line up perfectly with the unloading stations. Ah, uh, yeah, that actually adds more belt overall, belt entities. And so a lot of this is designed to minimize belt. And so I'm, just th so I'm making slightly less elegant designs just to minimize entities. If so, that makes sense. That makes yeah. perfect sense. And yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff you got to do to do that. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and on a on this scale with belts, uh, that's really important to minimize oh, those yeah. entities. The Reddit belt book is just useless here. It is uh, the worst thing you could possibly bring into this base. It's so UPS inefficient. Yeah. So uh, now this is. Right, so <laughs> Ah, uh, you're up to the balancer. The thing. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't even all of it, too. So this is... So this is actually um, three distinct outputs. So the 32-lane balancer here in the center is for iron to the main base that's not circuit-related. So this goes to your gears, engines, uh, and everything else that needs iron. That mm -hmm. I can't think of at the minute. So yeah, mining drills, assembly, machines, and then a little bit over here is uh, a thing, which I'm not. I don't want to call it a balancer because it's not a balancer. It's more something that just helps if any one lane runs short. It just maintain make helps maintain throughput. Shuffler is a good word for it, I think. Shuffler. That's yep. I, yeah, I there you go. I would agree with that. It just just helps with the um, balance out. But there's that word again. <laughs> it just helps um, <laughs> even out the any irregularities in drain and uh, supply. Right. And each one of these is for the green circuits. Uh, so like the one I'm standing at now is for one of the green circuit builds, and then this one's for the other one. Right. I so... actually originally tried to do it without, but it. it needed at least a little bit of something just to overcome any irregularities with the trains mm -hmm. uh a now you were telling pro me... tip though i was going to say is that if you can avoid building shufflers or balancers at all it do so because these are just absolute eps sinks oh yeah yeah that's a really ideally good there'll be none at all you can actually see there's a bit of in i just spotted there's a bit of an inefficiency here with these belts the way they wiggle about potentially mm. Maybe. Um, because this base has changed a lot and I'm always changing things, there's always something that became becomes redundant. Right. Um, uh, just to back a step with the smelting, so as far as actual calculations go, so these are still 9.4 with 20% productivity. The only difference is it's set, instead of setting up for a specific, uh, what you would do for... Uh, bot smelting. These are set up to fill a lane of each. Um, uh, let me try again. 
it's set up to fill a lane, um, one side of each uh, belt. Um, okay. And then, f so seven smelters fill one belt, one lane, and then another seven fill the other, and then it transitions into the next uh, input output uh, in the stack. Right. So we're at the transition point right now, where it shuffles over by by one tile, and then the next uh, column, well, the next sort of groups belt group starts. Mm -hmm. If you can figure it out, instead of feeding four in and four out, you can put five in and six out. Hmm. Hmm. You know, in case you want to tear down your entire smelter again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, let's not go there again. Um, just as a side note, it was actually also designed to match the steel smelter, which uh, there's eight columns. Okay. Uh, I guess now, is a, because we've been talking about iron, now is a good time to talk about the steel smelter. And so each train unloader goes to a steel smelter, so four belts in, and then, uh, what was it, four... I actually got it wrong originally, and the ore didn't reach the end of the lane. I think it was six coming up. I'll have to take a peek. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. I had three. I had one shared belt up between each uh, smelter, but then I needed to break it up into two and two. So each unloader dedic is dedicated to each one. And so this steel smelting column produces one compressed belt of steel plate, and then there's eight of those total. So eight blue belts of steel. That is... um. That is a lot of steel when you think about how how much it requires to actually make steel. Um, and you're just utilizing direct insertion here, which is good. Um, yeah. The... Now with modules, is it actually a one-to-one? -one? I don't remember. Uh, it isn't, and you'll actually see that it alternates between beacon, between each build is beacon, then no beacon, beacon, then no beacon. And okay. that's because I can afford to slow down the iron plate smelting to 8.4 instead of 9.4. Interesting. Okay. I actually also experimented with putting efficiency modules in that gap, but it's not worth it. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. I was just curious because it was a free beacon. Mm -hmm. it's not, it turns out that it actually makes more pollution than nothing at all over at the steam plant or well that's version 14 because this was actually designed before version 15 right um, yeah but it basically just made more pollution elsewhere so yeah. that's the iron and steel smelting copper smelting and stone smelt brick smelting is basically the same thing just not quite as much right in yeah, case guess, anyone's so wondering about how effective these efficiency mo or uh, sorry productivity modules are Instead of needing 40 belts, you need 27.7 belts of ore to feed it. That's actually pretty significant. Yeah. Productivity is so important. Yeah, and to think when you to think that productivity in uh, smelting is actually one of the last things you want to put it in. Well, it takes seven hours to pay for itself when I calculated it, but still a lot a lot of people play a lot more than seven hours so it's definitely worth doing oh yeah yeah it's just a little lower on the priority list so yeah copper is pretty much the same um but then circuits you can actually see um just before we go to circuits copper is direct out of the smelter into circuits no uh balancer or shuffler <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i love these like highways of undergrounds you have here oh yeah so one of the design requirements was to have an underground belt grid. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. And so you'll notice that they always align. So yeah, here is the circuit build. Uh, this one, it uses... You actually picked up on this pretty quickly. Instead of doing an 8-8, it's completely surrounded. And I basically wanted to make it as fast as physically possible because I did have an 8-8 previously, and it was really slow. This was actually quite difficult to design for. Yeah, you got it. Mix in fast with the stacks. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think I have a blueprint of the old one. It was two of these together, and it tried to fill a belt, and it ends up being the size twice the size, or the size of 
two of these, plus it came out to about here where I'm standing. So it was quite big. Right. And I think they were only basically a four four. It was like a pair of four fours. So they're only half beaconed. It was only a like crafting speed of three on the circuit machine. So, to clarify, because Zuri pointed this out, that you use a fast combined with the stacks um, because of... Ah, uh, yes. Get, you need to get... At this speed, you need to get the copper in so quickly and constantly that using stack inserters, like purely stack inserters, actually makes it not work enough because of the time it takes for the stack inserter to pick up all 12 of its items and dump it in. So mixing in the inserter with a lower stack size bonus helps fill in that gap. Yeah, um, because this, the copper wire machine mo moves so fast, in the time it takes for the stack inserter to pick up 13 items, it's already run out and been idle. Yeah. Yeah, and the, they sync up, so both the stack inserters try to operate at the same time, and fail. You see, if I sit here eating the circuits, the um, fast inserter nearly completes two swings in the time it takes the stack inserters to swing. Yeah, so it helps fill in that gap uh, really well. And uh, then you have these output front. This is, believe it or not, this is actually only half the circuits. This is mirrored again on top. <laughs> yep. Um, so so in, I've done something a bit unique here. Um, it was a bit of an experiment because I was wanting to try and eliminate the balancer output. Um, and as we'll see, it didn't work a little bit later on. So each one of these builds outputs half a lane. And then that gets merged into a single lane. And the first four or two builds that we're at now produce one bell either side. And this becomes the filler for the 1415 of the rest of this build. Oh. And so as we come up, we have a, a sort of a, mi um, a merging thing either side. And it will just push circuits in as the gap for the 1415 passes through that one in. Was it 13, 14, or 14, 15? 14, 15. I think I got it wrong. 14, okay. 15. Yeah. It's too early in the morning. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, so it fills uh, the gap. So this means this all, it always outputs a compressed belt. Right, which is a really uh, and good And then... Trick. You use way up. too many prime and semi-prime numbers. Really? How many belts does this half make? 17? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and there's actually a, a booster for it here as well. So this oh, is the no, halfway no. point. Okay. A lot of the odd numbers come from trying to max out the... or make, trying to fit all the numbers around uh, one compressed blue belt. And so what we have at the end is uh, 16 blue belts of circuits. And then this one on the end, the spillover goes up on the 17th. Okay. And then I see. that repeats on the other side. And there's actually another thing that sets everyone off. Um, and that's over here where the copper gets separated out into the two builds. So there's a splitter here. And as it works out, each side needs six and a half lanes of copper and so when this is fully running this one with a splitter will always only ever have one uh lane of the two lanes running and it drives everyone insane because it, it perfectly works. drains it so it just splits yeah. by lane yeah <laughs> and it's perfectly fine everyone says oh you need to do something to fix it it's like no it's fine yeah and that's it something... drains six and a half the 13 13 lanes of copper perfectly and that brings up a good point really quickly to touch on is for, well, belt mega bases or belt bases in general, a lot of times, and Zuri I, and I have covered this in workshops, but a lot of times things that look like they need fixing or balancing don't actually and are actually best left untouched rather than throwing in some wonky like lane balancer that's actually going to slow it down. Uh, and this would have been a good example is when it only does it like by lane that like you said, a lot of people look at it and say, you know, this needs fixing when actually it's working exactly how it needs to. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. 
they open up the production graph and it's been doing 80k per minute for like an hour. It's like, oh, I'm pretty sure it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes um, it, you need to look at a problem over time before coming to a conclusion. Because the real problem may not necessarily reveal itself straight away. Yeah, definitely. And if you judge too quickly, it just leads you astray. Mm-hmm. So... And so... This... <laughs> I'm still fascinated <laughs> by this monster. <laughs> Um, it's not very often you see 34 compressed lanes of green circuits. Of green circuits. Now, one thing um, I just want to quickly bring up is the top side is pretty much identical, except you've left these lanes not undergrounded. Now, is there there's a reason for that? Yeah, that was for version 16 testing. Okay. Okay, I, I didn't know if there was some other <laughs> hidden It was solution. also for comparing active entities on the build in this version and oh boy there's a lot of active entities on this one. Oh, i bet um, um the, originally so i actually have a version of this i have an entire test world of this build on well, all the builds on this i built them in a creative map and with both of them together on this map before i undergrounded them there was a few chunks with over a thousand active entities oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> that is insane um, so if we, we can probably move over to the red circuits now as yep. the next logical place. And, uh, this is it's currently under redevelopment again with future redevelopments planned. Sorry. Yeah. Do something <laughs> that we pointed out. So currently it looks like you're doing a one to two, um, in regards to the cable inserting into two, um, red circuit machines. And these are... Yeah mostly this is, normal beaconed yeah this is now it was trying to be um one to two and then align the beacons with the copper cable but as you can see the positioning slightly off and it actually aligns with the red circuits it was actually good that Mazuri pointed it out because for the longest time red circuits it was always a bit of a problem and i could never figure out why i'll just build and, a little prototype out here for you Yeah, so instead of having the red circus butter tied against each other, it needs the gap. Okay, yeah, to get the beacon coverage so things actually run uh, more yeah, so nicely together. Where we're standing, the beacon is aligned with the copper cable assembly machine, which is what it should do. But then down here, it doesn't align. And then it instead aligns with this red circuit machine, slowing it down. So its right. crafting speed's 4.25. Whereas the copper wire is 5.5, .5, and it should be the other way around. Mm -hmm. And this is the fix, and it, but it increases it by quite a bit, actually, since it has this gap. Yeah, it does increase the size. Yeah. Uh, size isn't necessarily a problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be exactly the same <laughs> number of entities, or even fewer entities, actually, since it'll be more efficient. Mm -hmm. And uh... this is, I think, version five of the red circuit build the one i had previously the assembly machine was only running at like 3.3 .3 or something but they're only half beacons and what i had was four assemblies machines surrounded by a single copper wire assembler i don't think oh, i have wow. a also have a blueprint on hand of that one but it was considerably bigger so it used to expand all the way out to the green circuit build so there was a robot gap for a robo port at the belts and then the starter beacons and so there's already been a huge size reduction uh, mm -hmm. just by increasing the speed of the uh red circuit machines right it also the old numbers were horrific it was nine by eleven nine uh units long by eleven belts output and so now it's 10 belts output. As which is another problem is that odd, particularly prime number outputs are really difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes they are. <laughs> yes. Um, and so all these num belt, all these builds have been trying to align to something which is 
sensible to divide down. So getting nine like nine belts in and thirteen belts out uh, was another one is just painful. I yeah. think that was the for the plastic here, nine to thirteen. Hmm. And just had no end of issues with it. I can imagine. <laughs> So you actually, you actually see also with the, um, the distribution of the plastic and circuits um, in the process of changing it. So this was the old one, and over here is a newer one uh, provided by Madzuri. I do what I can. Nice. So I'm the noticing uh, you, you're taking good advantage of the uh, belt weaving here, and on, well, with I belts in general, but on a mega base scale with belts, uh, this is really important to be able to do this because it saves you well room and just makes it easier a lot of times is using these multi-level belts to weave um, in between you actually see it's utilized quite extensively in the further builds further along particularly like um, electric furnaces some people hate it though I've seen lots of people complain about this trick I think it's valid yeah. but each to their own it, it does help quite a bit on like on this scale i mean not doing it would be uh, uh, make things i think substantially larger and just more of an issue ah there's now standing at something rather interesting um processing units or blue circuits so this thing is the literal green circuit sink so it's hmm. built so that <laughs> um, it's actually a little bit overbuilt, so the machine on the end generally doesn't run. But what happens is that an entire compressed, two entire comp compressed belts rather, of blue circuit, uh, green circuits come in. Now I'm getting my colors confused. The two, yeah, so two belts come in and they don't stop, they just disappear. <laughs> They're just like completely <laughs> evaporated Go by just, it looks like you're giving two full belts to just two, four, six, like eight blue circuit machines yeah Aren't i think it two was full belts? Like, I'm, I'm actually surprised like he, didn't do a, he didn't do a direct feed from green to blue a separate build somewhere i thought about that but at the same time that meant because most of the green circuit output goes here it's like 18 of the 36 belts goes here um, that meant that i wouldn't have the green river of belts he, he Green River of circuits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted the. It was a feature. It was a feature. So, uh, here though, now we're at the furnace and I am noticing the extensive use of uh, belt weaving, which is really cool. Yeah. And oh boy, this thing, this thing is a resource sink. This is probably one of the, the biggest resource sinks out of all of them. Just getting the resources in, this one took quite a while to build. Yeah, these things. Uh, the, only one worse than this is or on the same level is probably mining drills. Mm-hmm. Those things are insane. Um, yeah, so it was full belts ten... of steel eight cheap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Not at all. It's half of the steel I think goes here. Mm-hmm. Or nearly half of the steel <laughs> goes here. I'd imagine yeah, three them... belts of steel. Yeah. And it does eat other... <laughs> those does belts eight. of steel. So uh, then you're making batteries here, and this is just for, um, where does this go? Because batteries aren't made at the oil bin, are they? No, so the, the oil-based supply is the sulfuric acid. So batteries are for high-tech packs and satellites. Okay, which are made a little bit later on. Yeah, so the next one is gears. So mm. this is probably one of the few times where you'll see 12 compressed belts of gears. <laughs> this one... <laughs> Which is ridiculous, but actually, um, gears technically are better to put on a belt and send farther down than to run iron down all the way to the end source because the gears compress the iron uh, because it takes two iron to make one gear. So even with the productivity, you're essentially compressing down the amount after it's gone through and made gears. Yeah. Well, this one piece. actually, this one actually does have supply problems currently, but because because of the way it works, it sort of overcomes it anyway, just more or less by brute force. Mm -hmm. It should have the same problem that the wire cabling has. You, 
you might need to switch out one of these stack inserters for a fast inserter and kind of stagger it down the line as you go down so they don't eat the belts incorrectly. That's a good point, yeah. actually. I'm trying to think, because this one's actually one of the older builds. This was just a scaled up version of the original one rocket per minute base one. Uh, from memory, it was originally just two of these, and it outputted eight uncompressed. So this one was designed to produce an uncompressed uh, output of eight lanes, and then it, comp it went into an eight lane rebalancer, which then outputted uh, six compressed lanes. Jeez. <laughs> it actually worked really well, too. I was surprised. But it goes to show that sometimes you've got to think creatively um, and not necessarily just always aim for just doing a compressed belt. Because mm -hmm. as you can see, getting the iron, you know, it's a two to one minus the productivity. Getting all this iron in is a very difficult. And so shooting for maximum uptime and compressing a belt of gears is not necessarily the best way to, do, to go. Yeah, and this is highlighted even more on the mining drills here. Getting, <laughs> I see if you oh, yes. literally shove like every single possible space full of a belt or inserter to feed these things. Yeah, this one was actually one of the trickiest to feed because you compare it with like the assembly machine next to it, it's considerably bigger. And, mm -hmm. and that's just because of that one extra iron plate. That's, all, that's what's caused it. Yeah. It's it's pretty ridiculous. Um, but you still managed to do it with some nice uh, belt trickery. Like I'm noticing here, a really good trick um, that you can use is uh, you've undergrounded these gears, but only halfway. And that's to stop it from merging onto the greens. Although you probably could have just turned the belt in too, couldn't you? You could have, but I prefer the, that look. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So that's that's a nice little trick you can do. There's also a little bit of side loading at the end here, um, mm -hmm. just to help this one boost it a little bit. But these are designed to run incredibly fast uh, periodically instead of incredibly fast all the time. So right. because there's just so much that needs to go into it, just don't bother running at full speed. Just run it when it can. Mm -hmm. It's basically just the, and as far as the assembly machines go, it's basically just the same thing. So the assembly machines came first, and then the mining drills were scaled up. Right. In that. Uh, so now we're on to military components. So this is actually one of the newer parts of the base. Originally, I didn't build it with uh, military, and then I was like, I want to do military. So I re had to rebuild the base entirely to squeeze just these in. <laughs> and so turrets are based, are actually based off of circuits. Uh, not circuits, uh, red uh, the furnaces, electric furnaces, mm -hmm. uh, because their requirements are fairly similar, and there's not much really that more, more to it. Yeah. It's surrounded with um, inserters entirely. You can actually see there's a fast inserter on one of the iron loads. Oh yeah. Yeah, I noticed that on this one. Uh, what was it? I think it was twenty ten and ten. Yeah, 20, 10, and 10. And so for the iron plate, it needed the extra boost. Right. Um, and you can actually see there's a fairly consistent theme going on where it's a column of um, machines in between. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty much always an 8 8 build. And then it's just squeezing the belt in and out and then making it fit. Right. Um, balancing out the numbers so that it elegantly inputs and outputs. Um, the materials on the belt are not outputting like 13 and 7 just duh, prime numbers duh. yeah so and I'm noticing here again then you've done a, a box design for the engines uh, with, with the beacons rather uh, kind of the same deal that you did with the green circuits oh yeah so this one um, took quite a bit of experimentation to find this one um engines is horrible because they're so slow so this right. is one of the biggest builds in the entire base as as far as in as science intermediates goes not counting green circuits i actually put that in a separate category mm -hmm. 
and originally it was an 8-8 eight eight, and this thing was <laughs> three times the size at least wow it was enormous um yeah and then there's the electric engines next to it probably on the wrong side perhaps but that's <laughs> partially because uh the labs actually moved they're originally down where the plastic unloading was so that might start to make a bit more sense uh, as you see some of the belts where they sort of navigate in one direction then suddenly change direction mm -hmm. uh, ah so now we're up to the science packs yeah which uh, is quite quite elegant I like the kind of synchronized way you've done the belts yeah, and stuff. almost almost except for the greens I might update those one day but yeah they all basically use the same fundamental design so it uses the recently at the time introduced longer blue belts going underneath um, and then the two assemblers and then a gap and then the gap is to resync it with the uh, to re resync the tessellation with the beacons okay and then it just repeats until you have either uh, where is it here we are where I am. So that's the way the side loading point where it switches lane. So each one has a midpoint where it fills the other lane. I see. Okay. Very clever. The only exception to that is blue science, which is two col two yeah, columns. Uh, okay. but just because it's so much bigger than everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, mil like military or every pack up to uh, I can't even say that actually because um, blue and high tech are the exceptions. Right. So then blue or high tech is kind of an interesting different one because you need cable. So you're yeah. inserting cable directly uh, in a fairly similar formation in which you did the red circuit build. This is actually derived from the old red circuit build. And so it's a modified version of that. And that's why it looks a bit wonky. Okay. Uh, yeah, because the original red circuit builder had a little stub line where I'm standing and then pushed into the main belt output and went down like so. I see. Okay. So uh, then... And then beyond that is the rocket production. Right, and these things I was going to say earlier... Uh, that this is probably where most of your other steel goes, is these low-density structures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is where the... Uh, four, well, half of the steel goes here. Four belts of steel goes here. Yeah, these things absolutely chew through the steel. Oh, yeah. This one's actually another kind of annoying one, but it's not that bad. It's, um, four, it's four to five. So okay. four belts in, uh, and then five belts out. So there's actually a um, a four-way balancer and then an extractor here and then after the extractor it's just one two three four okay. the balance is perhaps unnecessary now uh, because the ratio was different I see okay yeah this is again derived from the this is the exact same build that I had on the uh, one rocket per minute base before this base. Oh yeah, I, thought, I knew I see, saw that beacon arrangement before. This is where the engine one came from. Okay, yeah. Now it does look familiar. And much the same with the rocket control units. Fortunately, they only need one and one. Mm -hmm. So they're very straightforward. Yeah. Do you know what's fun, actually, is that there was quite a few flipped belts on the output in this that uh, I'm not entirely sure how they came about. Um, possibly from bots, uh, oh. but it was surprising how long it takes to actually discover them between <laughs> the belt buffering up and the way that consumption of everything else works. Yeah, it is. There's also a lot of uh, side loading going on, which I need to remove. Mm -hmm. uh, now... And, and now we're at the labs. And the, oh yes, and the satellite. So even the satellite is produced entirely with bells. Oh yeah. I mean <laughs> it has to be, you gotta right? Gotta go all out. Yeah, gotta go all out. And I'm also noticing that the rocket fuel is being trained in, so I assume that's made at the oil? 
Yes, that's made at the oil base. So the oil base is, uh, if you follow the yard of outpost trains, it goes down, it just follows along, and then there's the oil base down there. Okay. And that should look very familiar because that's, this is where the original um, design that we use in the Colonel Will maps come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so very familiar there. And uh, this is just, <laughs> this is pretty magnificent to look at. So I feel like uh, we're, probably definitely out of time um but i i guess as, as last thoughts um do either of you guys have any like tips or anything for planning like a, a, a mega base of this size or even smaller using belts because i can only imagine that the planning going into this would be quite significant unless maybe did you just wing it or <laughs> uh I actually just sort of, I dived in bl mostly blind. I had some idea of what I was doing, but I actually learned a lot about belts and balancing, very advanced stuff that I didn't actually know um, until I started building this and then diagnosing problems. Uh, one one of the things I discovered was the only bel belt balances that you should ever use is a four, eight, uh, for the most, four or an eight for the most part. Anything else just doesn't work. Lilith throughput. Are the yeah the two to the end balancers, but yeah, don't exceed eight. Not not really if you can avoid it. Yeah, yeah. If you can do train balancing, that's a lot easier and a lot uh, less UPS intensive. Actually, than trying to get like a thirty-two belt balancer going. Yeah. yeah so the. Re the reason why I have the 32 lane circuit balancer was because of unequal drain on the lanes, which is actually something that we sort of didn't quite touch on with the science builds was that they tend, so the, the downside with the science builds that I have is that they tend to draw from one lane only and it caused a huge unequal drain. And it was so significant in this space. It was up like uh, a, a, a single lane draw from the low density structures was stopping red circuits from running properly. So like one end of the base to the other. Wow. And that's where it's really important to use the, uh, late the balance side uh, extractors. Yeah. Like the one, uh, we should actually wander over and point it out. The one that I have, uh, I, there's, there's one here, actually. Um, uh, this is a variation that I came up with independently of Mazuri's one. But this one has the limitation um, that you can only pull one belt out of it because of the red belt underground. Whereas the Mazuri one isn't affected by throughput. Yeah, you can pull two full blue belts off of it. Uh, same thing with the the one you see on the, the smelters. Usually this works pretty good. It's not perfect. You can get imbalances on it, though. Yeah. But it certainly the other helps. thing I've the other thing I've learned is that if you must you like first thing is you only need these if unequal drain is a problem, and then if you need it, you need to put them only where the cause of the problem is. Yeah, you don't need these Not, everywhere. Only where it's yeah. causing the problem. Mm -hmm. um, because they won't do anything at the smelt. If you put these on the smelting, they won't do anything because it's happening further down the line. Right, which is uh, really a good tip that you because I've seen so many times people putting them everywhere or putting them at the very beginning when the problem really isn't until far, far down the line and it actually isn't doing anything, uh, you know, yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, excessive balancing, all it's going to do is be a lag machine for you. A good example, actually, just quickly, is here where I've got three four way balances for the gears, and so the input is fine but the output has huge um, lane drain problems. Mm. And this is something which I haven't figured out how to fix yet just because of the sh tight space required. This may be a cause of your problems, pulling from the end of an underground belt. Yeah, that's where the problem's coming from. So this particular, that's the downside to this arrangement. Huh, interesting. Um, yeah, I think that probably better wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, we better wrap it up. We're way over time. Um, 
So hopefully this kind of just gave you an idea of a belt mega base. I know it was kind of a little bit maybe more of a base tour, but we, we did try to explain some of the concepts and uh, give you an idea. And uh, from this point, we will head more into, I think, uh, looking at specific builds and build types uh, kind of on a like per build basis um, and, and kind of give you an idea of that. But that'll do it for now. You guys have any last thoughts? Nope. 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 All right. Thanks for watching as always, guys, and we will see you next time. Later. Yeah.